Hello everyone, Becky Williams from Full On Purpose, and today we are continuing our series on MTHFR mutations. So today I'm going to talk about, let's see how many things, um, 13 things which you really should avoid if you know that you have this mutation, whether it be the one that starts with an A or the one that starts with a C. Um, I'm not doing these talks very um, technical because you're welcome to do more research if you want to, but um, I like to just kind of give you a foundation on practical things that you can do if you do have this mutation. I've talked in the previous videos. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, please go back to videos one and two. Um, but I've told you that I'm pretty sure that I have uh, the mutation that starts with a C, just simply because my mom has a double mutation, which means that it's basically guaranteed that her kids do too. So let's talk about things to avoid whenever you have this mutation. Um, the first thing is folic acid. So folic acid, why would that be a problem? That's a good thing, right? When you take folic acid and your body is not able to process it correctly, remember we want them to turn into B vitamins and things like that. Typically people with this mutation struggle with fatigue. Um, it's because you have different like builds up, build ups of um, heavy metals in your body, things like that. So if you take folic acid and your body doesn't know what to do with it because it's missing the, um, the processes, I guess I'll say it that way, then it's just gonna be continuing to float around your body, right? So the folic acid that you can get at the store, it's synthetic and it is toxic to those of us who have the mutation. Um, it, it's already not converting, right? So if you're adding more, um, let's say that you have a bucket full of sand and the sand is overflowing, it's at the very top, and then you continue to pour more sand in it, it's not gonna help the bucket, it's just gonna overflow, and that's what happens basically when you take too much folic acid because your body doesn't know what to do with it. Um, Y'all know I like to butcher all of these really big words, so just go with me, okay? Um, B12, so thinking about like for our family, for my husband, he struggles with energy. Um, in the past, he has struggled with energy. And so we would take vitamin B12 supplements. Well, the ones that you can buy at the store, especially the ones that are lower price, they start with a C. It's like cyanocobalamin, maybe. That sounds almost close to probably what it, what it is. But anyway, this is actually made with cyanide, and it's, it's cheaper to make. And it just adds to, uh, I'm sorry, it's toxic to us. So you should only use the one that starts with the M, which is methylcobalamin. Um, anyway, so check the label. If it starts with a C, leave it. If it starts with an M um, for the B12, then that's the better one. That's going to be the higher medical grade. I think Dr. Maricola actually has some. You can look on his website. I support all the things that he does. So he has a really good one on there. Anyway, the third one actually might surprise you, but um, birth control pills. Birth control pills are actually not uh, something that women who have MTHFR do really well on. So if you take birth control pills and it's like you, you're just going crazy and it doesn't feel well, you feel sick, uh, maybe your cycles are a lot heavier, you gained a bunch of weight, all those kind of things. Maybe get tested for this and see if that's something that's affecting it. Also, um, methotrexate, I understand that that is a uh, medication for arthritis. This is also something that can actually not help if you have MTHFR, it can make you feel sick, so it's something you wanna avoid. Um, the fourth thing is gonna be pump inhibitors. So this would be like Prilosec or um, Prevacid, uh, those kind of antiacid, antiacids, excuse me, you really don't want to take those because it's going to block the vitamin B12 absorption in your gut. All right, so think about all the videos that we've talked about. You're already fatigued, you already, you know, are having some of these issues perhaps, and now you're taking an antiacid, and the antiacid is going to stop your body from, from the little bit of B12 that you do have, it's gonna stop your body um, from absorbing that. So, more exhaustion, right? Your heartburn's gone, but you have more exhaustion. All right, five, this is just a tip. If you have high homocysteine levels, go back and watch the first two videos to understand that. If they're high, you need to limit the foods that are really high in methionine, methyl, yeah, methionine. Um, so this would be like nuts, beef, lamb, cheese, turkey, pork, fish, shellfish, soy, 
eggs, dairy, beans. All of these kinds of things are going to be high in methanine and they're going to not help your homocysteine levels. Okay, so you all know that I love the keto diet. That is the way that I live. It's a modified keto that I do now that I'm fat adapted. However, think about this list of what's going on here. Nuts, beef, lamb, cheese, turkey, pork, fish, shellfish, um, not so much the soy, eggs, dairy, beans, not the beans and not the soy, but everything else on here are keto approved foods. So if you are on keto and you feel like garbage, maybe you have the MTHFR mutation, okay? Um, it could just be that your body is not processing because you have high homocysteine levels, okay? Just means that you need to change those levels. You need to get them fixed, okay? You need to, to help them to balance out. It doesn't mean that you can't do keto and be successful. It just means that you may have to make a couple tweaks, okay? The sixth thing to avoid is processed foods. Everybody should avoid processed foods. We already know that. Okay, um, the reason though, and another reason is that they actually have synthetic folic acid in it. Well, we already talked about folic acid as number one thing to avoid. And so when they're having added folic acid, not only are you getting the chemicals and the preservatives and the garbage and the dyes and all that stuff from it being processed, but now you're getting extra folic acid too. So um, he actually, this, remember, all these things are from Dr. Dan Purser's book, The 85% Solution. Several of you have told me that you actually purchased it, and I think that is wonderful. I'm not going to touch on everything in the book, okay? So go get the book. It's very inexpensive, very, very good at breaking it down. He has lots of technical terms, um, lots of charts and things like that that I'm not showing you. So I'm just kind of giving you an overview of um, this mutation. But if you want more information, he has a lot more in there. So. He suggests a cookbook, and I think it's one that he wrote, or his team wrote, it's MTHFR Whole Food Cookbook and Meal Plan. So I will find that for you, and I will post that under this link, I mean, post a link under this video so that you can find that. I've actually never seen it. This is the first time I've heard about it too, so we will look at that together. All right, number seven, you need to have a daily intake of greens, okay? This is things like, spinach and kale and Swiss chard and arugula, broccoli. Um, these have natural folate, which your body can readily process. It's very easy for your body to process the folate in these foods. So um, if you've ever tried the Turbo Atkins um, weight loss or diet soup, whatever it's called, the soup that we did for the very beginning in the keto challenge, that would be a really good soup because it has lots and lots of green veggies. So doing some type of, of soup that has green veggies in it will be really good for you um, you need those in your day. A lot of people will start the ketogenic diet and they will eat just dairies and red meats and um, nuts. Well, the problem is if you don't know if you're sensitive to any of those things, all of those are high inflammatory foods. You already may know that you're sensitive to dairy or you may know that you're sensitive to red meats and things like that. But without having a starting point, you may be adding all of those things onto your plate and then say, well, wait, I feel horrible. I'm supposed to be losing weight and feeling great. Um, if you have MTHFR and really just in general, this is a good rule of thumb is to have leafy greens. Don't forget when you start a ketogenic diet, please put the leafy greens into your diet. Um, I understand that they do have some carbs in it. I get it but those are very good carbs and it's gonna be something that your body needs if you have this mutation. Okay, number eight, remove, this is so important. I just had a conversation with someone, I don't have their permission to share um, who it was, but they were talking about um, their fillings that they have in their teeth. Actually, when they, were, when they removed them, they actually felt better, okay? Think about it. If you have fillings in your teeth, your body is not able to process the heavy metals that come with the fillings, what is it doing? It's just floating around in your body, okay? So consider finding someone who specializes in getting those removed um, and, and doing something as an alternative, okay? A lot of times when you have MTHFR, you, uh, or the mutation, I mean, you usually can't um, process heavy metals. And so the thing, if you remember back from the first video, the thing that actually helps you to process the heavy metals is glutathione. So when you're not producing the correct amounts of glutathione, your body's not able to process the heavy metals. I hope I'm being clear and making sense. Number nine, you need to take supplements. 
period. Okay. If you have the mutation, if you got it from your mom, if you got it from your dad, you have it. All right. And it, that's okay. You're going to feel better with taking supplements. Um, so B12 is a supplement. Remember, get the one that starts with an M, not the one that starts with a C. Turn that bottle over and look at it. Also, natural folate, which is called methylfolate, TMG. Um, in acetylcysteine, we're going to hope that that's how you say that. Riboflavin. Um, can't read my handwriting. Fish oil, vitamin C. So maybe look into Young Living Super C. I haven't checked it out yet. Um, but I, I would think that that would be a good one. Just check it for, um, for the ingredients and it make sure that it's not contradicting what I'm saying here. D3, the liquid, not the, um, just regular pill. So you want a liquid version of D3. It's very important and probiotics. So probiotics, I like life nine from young living. Um, I keep it in the fridge so that all the cultures in it stay, stay good. If you have a good probiotic, just make sure, um, that your gut is healthy by taking these probiotics. Uh, make sure to work with your doctor to get the levels right on this. Okay. This is not a blanket statement. You're not a cookie cutter. God made every single one of us different and our chemical makeup's different. Yeah. Some of the things are the same, but the different levels and all that kind of stuff is going to be different for you. So talk with your doctor about these levels to figure out what is the right percentage or what is the right dosage for you for these vitamins. Um, 10, eat more zinc containing foods. So look and see if your foods are containing copper um, versus zinc. You would want more um, things that have zinc in it than copper. Number 11 is avoid aspirin. Now, he did say in the book that he's not sure about this one. He hasn't really um, had extensive research on it, but he just added it in for you to kind of do your own research on that. Number 12, I kind of talked about this a little bit, but I want to talk about it in a different way. Um, birth control pills and also Deprivera. Um, both of these are not good because if you have the mutation, then your body is actually already at a risk for blood clots. Remember, we talked about that in the very beginning, um, actually videos one and two. So if you have a high risk of blood clots and then you're taking these things, it could actually increase your risk and put you right at the threshold of, of disaster there. So you'd want to stay away from those kind of things. Um, and then 13 which this one makes sense is prenatal vitamins. Why? Because they're really high in folic acid. If you're lacking that enzyme, you're not gonna be able to process the folic acid. So folic acid showed up three different times here in our, our list of 13 things. So um, I hope that that was helpful and that maybe some of these things resonated with you. So maybe you're saying, oh, that's why I couldn't take that when I was pregnant or that's why you know I didn't feel well on this. So Maybe just look at this list and kind of compare it to how you are. You may have the gene and you may not. What I want to do or what I'm choosing to do is to help you to process, if you do have the gene, what it is that you can do to help to improve your life um, with supplementation and things that are natural and things like foods. Okay, so next time, I think I have two more videos that I'm going to do. Um, it's going to talk about the protocols and different things for the mutations. It's going to be a very... Um, brief overview because I want you to get the book to really study it and go through the whole thing. Um, and I think I'm also going to talk about some dietary modifications and a little more about the vitamins on what to do. Cause I know I just kind of gave you a big list there. That's not really that super helpful. Um, but this week I just wanted to talk about the importance of taking vitamins and supplements. So that is it for this week's word up Wednesday. Find us on Instagram and full on um, I'm always available by email, get your people in this group so that they can, um, can hear this. At this point, I'm still sharing it on the public page just so that I can do my best to scoot everybody over here. Um, but I want them to know I did not quit doing Word of Wednesday videos because I do think these are very important. So that is all for me. I wish you well. I hope you're doing awesome. Stay warm today. It is. It was like super hot yesterday. Today it's cold and rainy. So um, take those vitamins and keep yourself doing good. Love you guys. See you next week.